the church has kind of uh, reached out to the community to bring um, uh, just as a kind of community relationships. Because I know, I know, I think you'd written like in the 60s and 70s, that was a big thing, getting the college students mm -hmm. to come in. And are there other programs like that? that now? Yeah. Now, in the past? But yeah. Well, like, yeah, now we have um, what's called Friday Night Live. Mm -hmm. And it's every Friday night, even like tonight, we have university uh, choir, the Marquee Choir, they come sing, and then there's a, a young man named Chris Wesley, his dad is over there. He's a, I'm sorry, his dad's senior pastor of Antioch Baptist Church in Dallas. <coughs> well, so he'll come tonight. Uh, it starts about 7, they eat over about 9, something like that. You don't have many people, 20 or so, 25. And, and, and we have that. Uh, every third Sunday of the month, we have the university choir, whoever wants to, to come and sing for us. Uh, if there's ministers from the university, we have them like a uh, Reverend. Uh, I can't think of his name now. Lubell Hendricks? Yeah, Lubell Hendricks. He, he, when he first came here from Louisiana, well, he was a member of our church. And we welcomed him in. And he later went to the ministry and uh, became uh, East Canning. And we have uh, another minister from the church. He's the el 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 elderly man, him and his wife. He's our associate minister now. We've always tried to establish a link between us and the university. You know, our doors open to them, come, do, sing, play, whatever we want to do, you know. The thing that bothers me, we only, we only get black students. We can't get, you know, Hispanics. We can't get one to whites. We can't get, you know, Asians. All we're getting is black kids. And, and that's my problem. They say, well, I don't worry about that. You know, they're coming time. I'm like, when, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you know, I don't, if we had a, it wouldn't bother me if we had a, a pastor of another race. I don't care as long as people come. I don't think you just always be just a black church only. How yeah. do you think the response would be? Of, of, uh, would there be any sort of controversy if there was a, a, a pastor of another race? We have some that come mm -hmm. all the time and speak for us. Mm -hmm. And there are some with the older members, not with the, not with the ones on the 40. They're, they're cool with it. But those 70, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it's a problem. It's a problem. Let's uh, go back to the question that Shanna asked. Uh, if you, when there's an election, do you bring in politicians to speak to the congregation? We don't, per se. We open the doors and say, if you're running for office in Congress, school board, city, where it might be, you come and speak to us. You know. So we invite them to come. Uh, I think John Sands came, the mayor of Congress come. Different, different city officials will come on Sunday mornings, and we have a, a five minutes or so to extend, you know, like, like it is Sunday. And they'll say, I'm this person, I'm running for this, and I'll do this for you, I'll do that for you. And uh, we do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about, say, presidential elections? Uh, well, would, would some representatives of the candidates come in and speak or ask to come in and speak and we would under this condition that both opponents can come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay now if you just if you say republican democrat we're just not going to have a democrat come and that's it mm -hmm. okay if, if the republican can come and so show another side of it or an independent then we got a problem with that so we invite you know all candidates mm -hmm. to come so the complexity of backing one candidate over the other, how is that, how complicated did that get with uh, Obama? I mean, was there, there, uh, uh, was there, uh, what was the environment around the time of, of Obama getting into the election and then making his way through the various hurdles that led to the presidency? With Obama, most people, I'm going to say 60% of the people voted for him simply because he was black. Mm -hmm. Not because of his policies or because of his political record. Simply because he would be the first black president. They knew six months ago they never heard of him, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but it's just it's because he's black, I didn't vote for him. And, he, you know, and then we had some who did not, who were stomped against him because mm -hmm. they thought he's Antichrist. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's change, it's what the Antichrist is going to do. Mm -hmm. And so there was a fight against that. And there was some, there was some, uh, 
some problems with Mr. Moore when he would want to get up every Sunday and say, you know, to support this, this guy. Because something, well, we're the church, we shouldn't be into this, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it kind of bounced back and forth. Yeah. Do, do you recall, and maybe you don't, back in the 60s when there was an effort to register African Americans mm -hmm. to vote, did, did the church open its doors to, uh, or support that, or get involved in, in say, registering blacks to vote, or encouraging them to vote? <laughs> we had little cards printed up, uh, and we had designated drivers. And they, <laughs> there was a push that you wouldn't believe. I mean, there was about, I know about six people would go to your house and talk to you if you need, if you need transportation. We got transportation to go up there and take the boat. Uh, this church is really big on, on political things. So yeah, during those days, yeah, we so were. The church is, is really big on getting uh, the congregation involved with politics and empowered to participate, but very, very careful about not uh, uh, just determining what that those political choices will be. Sure. Get involved. Yeah. But um, where? But but it sounds like in every case, rhetorically and practically, it's like we will only have these kinds of conversations if we have both candidates. Yeah. Or you're welcome to come talk to us, but we're not going to go out and, and invite any particular candidate. Right. Okay. Basically, especially with that philosophy. Yeah. We welcome you to come, and you know, we want to vote you. If you want our vote, well, you come, you talk to us, but we're also going to fill up the candidate well, and mm -hmm. you know, we're free to make up our mind. Now, we have some strong, some very strong personalities in this church who <laughs> 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 almost, you know, put a gun to your head and say, vote for this guy, <laughs> right? But, you know, our pastor and most of the membership, you know, they said, well, you know, you do the way your conscience leads you, you know, what's best for you and your family. Um, we, 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 most of the members, I would say out of ten members, you're going to find seven and a half Democrats. <laughs> and maybe one and a half Republicans, that's about it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 That half is undecided or something? <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got some people here, they may not speak their opinion, but they, yeah, they, they know what they think. Can, can you tell us the role that women play in the church in terms of, of, of organizing events and maybe just keeping the church going and functioning? What's, what's been the role of women in the church? See, I hate you asking that. I really do. <laughs> um, the role of women in this church, I hate to say it, is a second class subservient role. Even now. Even now. Even now. Now, let us see it. By membership, you take ten people, eight of them are women. Seven are women. Our women, I know, women in this church, I number men two to one. Even so, they don't have a lot of political clout here. Uh, as Baptists, we don't really recognize or really uh, go along with women preachers. I can never remember a time a woman stood behind that pulpit. Not one. Not one. Uh, we have some women who are presidents of auxiliaries, like the choir, uh, maybe the usher board, something like that. But that's basically about it. And they don't really listen to their input in terms of, you know, the way women do it around here is that most of the people are married, so when they go home at night, the wives will talk to the husbands at home. <laughs> and then when the husband comes back the next morning, well, I, got some, I got some idea last night. <laughs> this came to me. And yeah, this came to me, yeah. But no, it, so even though the women are not up front, they're still making big decisions here. They really are. I mean, from the color of the carpet to whatever. Yeah, they are. They really are. You mentioned when we were taking the tour, you mentioned deacons and deaconettes. So mm -hmm. do you have both male and female mm -hmm. deacons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have... Uh, a deacon traditionally set, except for me because I'm using video and I have someone doing it. But we sit on the first row on this side, and the deaconess is set on this side. Now in the other church we saw we had right in the front, they would sit like on the side. Mm -hmm. So the, the deacon would sit here, and the deaconess would sit on the other side. Basically all the deaconesses do is... Uh,